I wanted to be a writer. The writer in me was just doing her thing until March 7, 2018. That day I joined Twitter and could read comments under my articles and agree or disagree with people's opinions. I would comment on theirs too. One day I found a particular news headline misogynistic. I had to tell my former colleague where he was wrong. Did he correct himself? You wish. He slid into my DMs to call me names, threatened me in different ways. I knew I had to call out. The Nepali Twitter space turned in his support. They chose to shut up to his misogyny and question my character. Almost a year later, I called out a perpetrator who once was a part of my newsroom and my colleagues had denied taking any action when I had confided. The troll army, as usual, started questioning my character. Twitter to me has been like that toxic ex-partner who you end up trauma bonding with. I know it is toxic. I end up going however. Jeez. For another incident when a popular artist who otherwise talks about equality and safe spaces for women and queer folks called me a slut, I knew I had to call out. And this time I took it to Instagram. Because at some point in life, you leave that toxic ex-partner behind, which is Twitter, and choose a rebound. Instagram was my rebound. And guess the consequences? I'm still scared to open my Instagram DMs. For his fans have done exactly what he had done. Slut shame me. Let me come to another Twitter incident. The toxic ex-partner strikes again. I had written an article against the crimes of one of the biggest cult leaders of our times. I talked about his casteism, misogyny, anti-tribal activism, environmental exploitation, etc. etc. Never in my life I had imagined an article I wrote would bring problems of this intensity in my life. I had imagined the trolls to just break me for a day or two. But it's been months and I'm still at the receiving end of things. Most of my trolls are Pahariya, Hindu, upper caste, cis het men, accustomed to every sort of privilege you can think of. They would write things that would break me, but I knew I had to gather myself and get up every time. One of them had threatened to behead me. He managed to find my home. The legal system refused to file a complaint, citing lack of evidence. These incidents have gradually limited my social media presence. From an absolute social media nerd to someone whose traumas are triggered every time they are on social media, my mental health has been on a downward spiral. I have, however, made it to life so far despite the massive trolling, death threats, rape threats and right-wing beliefs remaining rife. It also took me some time to understand the troll tactics and the need for our own space on the internet where we can just express ourselves, our views, our ideas, our opinions. These incidents, apart from putting me in the spotlight of getting badly trolled, have also made me realize how we are in dire need of such safe digital spaces. I know consequences like this do not have to come with a job. You do not have to associate it with making you stronger. But it took me some time to rise up and decide I am here to fight my fight. I still want to be a writer.